sneak attack. Hey y'all, I'm coming to you from the kitchen and it is super late in the morning. It's about 2.30 in the morning. I feel bad for people who have their notifications on because it's probably like, bing, ding, 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 ding. She's live and y'all are probably like, well crap, it's 2.30. Doesn't she ever sleep? No. I don't. I'm too busy doing crap to make y'all entertained. So, voila! Be entertained! Bazinga zanga! I'm about to entertain your faces off. So, I don't see any comments yet. So, I don't know if I have comments this time or not. Um, unfortunately, sometimes it's like a crap shoot. So, I may or may not see ya. So, May the odds be ever in your favor. But tonight I'm gonna show you how to do a storyboard tumbler. Um, basically what that is is it's the tumbler that's got the stuff all shaky marakey and got the juices flowing and it's all it's fancy dancy and it's well it's what everybody wants to know how to do and kind of sort of what nobody knows how to do yet except a few people have been kind enough to share their top secret crap with me. And so I figured with their permission, I would share it with you. Now, I have never done one in full completion because I just got my shipment in. And so I figured, well, what better way to nail it or fail it than to do it live with you. But it's going to have to be in a couple of different parts. So I'm gonna warn you now, this is part one of the storyboard tumbler. So the tumbler comes in uh, a piece contraption. I'm gonna kind of show you, and I'm sorry, I don't see comments. Um, so if you're talking to me, I don't see it. I apologize. Um, but it comes with this piece inside here, okay? So it comes all up in there. There's one on the porch. If, do you have a second to grab it? One that's put together. I'm going to show you what it looks like all put together. And I'll show you how to like take it apart. But basically you're going to take out the insides. You're going to take its guts out. And then you're going to take this little rim. And you're going to spray paint it whatever the desired color you want. But I'm spray painting it white. I have two extraordinarily special people in mind for these particular storyboards that are very near and dear to my heart. So um, I have already sprayed them and I have already, I'm sorry, I know I keep going blurry, I apologize. Um, I'm trying to fix that. Um, so I've already spray painted them, I've already taped their rim, just this little, just the lip, just the tip. <laughs> um, so I've already spray painted the, the whole thing um, and taped up just the lip of it. And then I've already taken apart the pieces and parts. So this you're not going to need again. Um, and it doesn't twist because it twists on the bottom. But this you're not going to need again until you actually put it all back together after you've epoxied and glittered and schmittered and skittered all over it. Okay. So you're not going to need this. So just put it back in its little box. And where I got my storyboard tumbler from is Hogs. Um, that's where everybody was getting theirs. It's a 20 ounce cup. It's from Hogs. Um, you can order it from there. They're not too expensive. They're about eight and a half bucks a piece. Um, maybe nine bucks. So, um, they're not very expensive. Um, and they're pretty decent cups. I mean, I, I like Hogs cups. They're decent. They're comparable in pricing and their shipping is, you know, comparable to everybody else's. So, um, these are good little, and they're the ones that have the storyboards. Um, Dollar Tree does have similar to it, but they're not um, stainless steel cups. They're plastic Dollar Tree cups. So, remember, you get what you pay for. So, uh, don't go cheapskating people because that's just chinchy. Okay, so look. This is what it comes like um, when you get it out of the box. You're going to unscrew the bottom. You're going to... huh? Take your top off, and when you take, well, you're going to take this top off and pop the other top off. 
Okay. So you're going to stick your thumb and pull this. So this is what you're spray painting. Okay. You're going to take this lip up and spray paint this. And then you're just going to take these inserts out because you're not going to need that because your, your inserts are going to be, or your story is actually going to be on the steel wall of, of this thing. Okay. So you really don't even need these lovely little papers. Even though I saved them because my nugget loves to draw on them. So you're going to take um, this part. And this is what's on my turner right now. Except it's spray painted white. So this is what it comes looking like when it comes from the company. Okay. And so that's what you get. Okay. For like eight, nine bucks. Something like that. Alright. So all I'm doing now is epoxying them and glittering and epoxying. So I'm going to glitter epoxy them with you so that you see step by step, step by step. Ooh, baby, gonna get to you, girl. That's sad. I know every word to that song. Every single word. Step one, we can have lots of fun. Step two, there's so much we can do. That's so bad. It's just you and me. I can give you more. Y'all, it's probably been 25 years since I've heard that song. And I still remember every word. I'm sorry, I know I keep going blurry. It's because I'm moving around with my mad skills. Alright, so. These are called FIFO, FIFO, I don't know, FIFA, FOFOM. I don't know what the hell they're called. But they're wonderful. Um, I need this one, I guess. And so, I'm just moving some stuff around. And I'm actually going to do two of them. Um, for you and I just use just a little bit ah. are you kidding me I just gotta wait till it wait till it drips so while we're waiting for this to drip if you'd like to give this video a thumbs up that'd be super great And I'd like to give a huge shout out to Princess Banana Butts YouTube. She is phenomenal. And I love watching um, Princess Banana Butts YouTube and her amazing slime videos. So, Princess Banana Butt, if you are watching, thank you for your incredible slime videos and your wonderful tutorials and antics with your sister I have learned and laughed a lot with you and from you so thank you princess banana butts so that's my my big shout out my princess banana butts. Um, she's probably definitely sleeping right now. But when she wakes up, princess banana butt, please know that I love your YouTube. And I think you're adorable. And I thank you for being such a sweetheart. And so right now I'm just mixing the epoxy. I use Pro Marine Epoxy. Um, they are one of our affiliates. They contribute to our nursery and they are amazing. Um, I only use Pro Marine Epoxy. I think they are, um, a great epoxy. They, um, cure very well. They cure very smooth. So, I like them very much. I sure wish I could see coming. Like, super, super bad. 
And so I stir for about three minutes or until it kind of gets like really good and crystal clear. And I scrape along the sides and make sure that I get every little miggity morsel. So I will begin the story. Many of you like story time. But I will begin the story of these storyboard tumblers. And it is probably the most important story that I will tell. It is not the funniest, I will warn you. But it is the most important. I have two children. I have Nugget, which most of you see on the live. And I have my other son, Jude. My son Jude is dead. He would be turning eight this year. He was amazing. He died at six and a half months old of a rare and vicious brain cancer. He was our first son and he was my world. We called him the mini Mexican because he was Mexican. We called him the Mighty Mini Mexican because he was just that. He was fierce. He was amazing. And he was my boy. So my sweet boy who gave one hell of a fight unfortunately did not make it. Unfortunately, the type of cancer that he had was so profound and so vicious that it took him very, very quickly. And we didn't get very much time with him from the moment that we found out that he had, um, I don't even know what is going on with this thing. From the time he, we found out he had cancer until the second that he died a month and a half later, we really didn't get very much time with him. We had a month and a half, which is more than what some people have with their children. And for that, I'm very, very lucky. And I count my lucky stars every day for it. But no time is ever enough time when you're talking about your children. So lo and behold, my sweet boy passed away when he was six and a half months old. And unfortunately, through journeys like this, we meet people. I've met mothers who have been war warriors beyond the strength of Shira. I've met mothers who have been the strongest of fighters. I've met mothers who have fought the fight with their children. I've met mothers who have watched their world crumble all around them like I have mine. And one in particular had a beautiful little girl. And unfortunately, her story resembles mine very closely, if not identically, except for the fact that she had a little girl and I had a little boy. And I'm going to move you to this cup over here just so that you can see. And so her daughter had the same type of cancer. The cancer that our children had was called ATRT. It was called atypical teratoid rhabdoid tumor. It is a very vicious, fast-growing 
just ratchet ass tumor. It grows in the brain, it stays in the brain, it goes very quickly, and it takes our children very quickly. It sickens me sometimes that pharmaceutical companies will spend billions and billions of dollars on medicines to make male organs more functional in their 80s. But we can't seem to find medical cures for our children to live longer. It sickens me that we can make men in their 80s sexual lives more exciting and wondrous but yet my six month old never had a fighting chance and so here I stand with you making these cups for my second son's education because I believe in giving my children the very best of everything I don't ever want my children to hurt for a single thing. And unfortunately, I can't do that for my first son. But I'll be damned if I'm not going to do it for my second. So on this journey, I met a mother whose story resembles mine. And... Her daughter had the same type of cancer, and she died as well. And through all of the struggles that you have, there's always that one person that you just sadly connect with through tragedy and she was my person she was the person that I connected with she reached out to me in the beginning when my baby first was diagnosed she reached out to me when we found out that he was first sick and answered every question that I had even though her daughter had been gone for a few years and it had probably brought up mountains of pain, she still sat with me on the phone one night and answered every single question I had had. She comforted every fear that I had ever thought about. She brought up every fear that I could have had and then comforted me through those fears. The ones that I thought of, the ones that I didn't have, the ones that I was going to have, the ones that were going to blindside me, the ones that were going to, um, the ones that I was going to anticipate, the ones that I weren't. And she was there through every single turn, every doorway, every heartbreak everything this stranger this woman that I was only connected through tragedy was there fighting through her own pain fighting through her own struggle was there days when I couldn't breathe days when I would call her and ask her how how do you make it past this day how do you make it past this minute? She was there. She had the answer. She had the, the will to say, well, I do this or I do that or I try this or I try that. She had an answer. She had a moment. It was never a rush through or a, or a, you know, push me over her shoulder. It was always a, you know, can you talk? And it was always a yes. What do you need? 
when Jude got sick and he was dying for the three days that my son was dying, actively dying, she was there on the phone, in Facebook, texting, saying, look, this is what's going to happen. And you need to be prepared. And this is what's going to happen. And you need to be aware of this. And look, I'm here if you need this, that, or the other. And I'm there if you need this, that, or the other. And she was just remarkable. Her daughter is beautiful. The sweetest little thing you'd ever seen. My only hope is that her and Jude are just living the dream up in heaven. That they are causing all kind of trouble. That they are literally just giving them hell up in heaven. That they are getting into everything. That they are doing whatever they can do to be mischievous and be silly and lean on each other when they miss their moms and send love to their moms when we miss them. I tell you, I struggle every day with losing my son. I struggle every breath I take. And although I put on as happy as a face I can, there isn't a moment that goes by that I don't miss my boy. There isn't a moment that goes by that I don't think, man, what would he have been? Would he be into this? Would I be into this? Would I have even started any of this? Would he be funny or silly? Would he be shy and quiet? I doubt it. Would he be, you know, an A student or a class clown? Probably both. If I had anything to do with either. Would he be athletic or a gamer or you know whatever what would he be would he be like me or would he be like his mama cat or what would he be and so tonight when I was thinking about what was I going to do on this cup, I came across these little shamrocks that made me think of this other mother who had been there for me on this journey. Because every year she shaves her head for this organization called St. Baldrick's. They are an organization that shaves their head to bring awareness to childhood cancer. And every year since its start, she has shaved her head completely bald to the scalp she is one of the original mamas that has shaved her head. And they do this shave for the brave. And so this year, Mildred signed up to shave for the brave. And I said, well, you know what? Even though Jude never lost a stitch of hair in his treatment, and never had to endure that. 
I think I'm going to do it this year too. And so our shade for the brave is April 5th. And I'm scared to death. But I can only imagine what children go through when they go through those aggressive treatments and the fear that they fear when they go different places and the questions they have and the feelings that they go through. So anyway, so I found this chunky, this shamrock chunky. And so I thought, well, I'm going to make a cup for that mama. And I don't want to say her name or her child's name because I don't have their permission. And honestly, it just kind of came to me. And I really um, just did this spur of the moment because I wanted to show you the part of the tumbler. But I share a lot of my life with y'all. And I share a lot of my life with um, my Facebook group too. And But more so, I wanted to tell the story because I know a lot of people will watch this video because everybody wants to find out about how to do the storybook tumbler. And I wanted my boy to be remembered. And I wanted my boy to be thought about. And so selfishly, I knew that I'd kind of have a captive audience where somebody, somewhere, would think about my boy. And somebody somewhere, when they watch this video, will pray for my boy and for the children out there that for every six seconds that goes by, there's a mom like me that gets the worst news of their life. For every six seconds that passes, there's a child out there that won't ever grow up. And it's gut-wrenching. And so, selfishly, I knew that if I told this story on the Storybook Live, that you would think of my boy. And that maybe, just maybe, he would live on even longer than the furthest of time would allow. And that's what's important to me. And so, I'm putting these shamrocks on this cup. Because they represent the shamrocks that she's had tattooed on her little bald head ever since her daughter passed away. And ever since she first did the, fir the very first shape of the brave. And the gold represents childhood cancer. Because unfortunately, that's the color that we have. Is gold is go gold for childhood cancer. And then in the actual liquid that I'm going to fill the cup with that you will see in a later video I am going to put I will show you in just a moment let me take these off before I shamrock the whole daggum in house um, I'm going to put these gray cancer ribbons I don't know if you could see them but these gray cancer ribbons because gray is the color of brain cancer so I figured it would tie all of it in really quite nicely for for her to understand how much I remember her girl and that even though her girl is gone I remember her girl and hopefully tonight you'll remember her girl. Her name starts with an R. So if you can remember baby R. 
And if you can remember baby Jude, that'd be amazing. So, that's the first part of the storybook Tumblr. So, I know this wasn't my typical funny um, video. And I know that it's very late. I know that it's almost 3 o'clock in the morning. And I know that it might not have been something you wanted to hear. And this probably might be one of my lowest, lowest ranking videos. But at the same time, even if... 10 people watch it. If 10 people think about my boy and baby R, then that's 10 more people I'm happy about. So, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the first part of the storybook video. I'll be doing the second part um, more than likely either tomorrow night or um, Saturday. Or, no, I don't even know what to say. I don't know what today is. It's, uh, today's Wednesday, so either Thursday or Friday, one of the day, I don't know. Someday soon, um, but just look for a storyboard, um, part two, and then it won't really matter what the hell day of the week it is, because you just have to look for a storyboard part two. I guess that makes sense. Um, but, um, thanks so much, and y'all be good to everybody, and y'all have a great night. Bye, y'all.